So I hope that makes sense. Um, and what I will do quickly is I will just ask you to post in the chat if this was the way that you did it or if you have some other solution because I'm about to show you a different way to do it, uh, which I think is arguably a little more elegant, but it takes a bit more thinking even if there are slightly less lines of working. Can you just post in the chat for me? Um, you got one of three options, okay? Either I solved it that way that was just shown, uh, I solved it a different way or um, I didn't solve it, like I was just a bit confused and I couldn't quite get there. Um, can you let me know? Okay, so I got a couple of early votes. Thank you, Emmanuel and Angad. Different, similar, thanks, Sazma and Varen. I'll wait for a couple more responses. Again, it's actually really important to me if you could not um, see, and maybe I didn't give you enough time, um, but if you couldn't see how, because that's an indicator for me that I should spend more time. We've Got a few more lessons still to revise and I'll spend, I'll invest some more time in vectors if it's valuable. Uh, any other responses? Thanks, Chao Liam and Jun. That is most of us, isn't it? Okay, okay, fantastic. All right, so I'm interested by the, uh, I'm interested by the balance. It actually seems quite um, even how many people did it this way versus another way. So I'm gonna show you one more um, path, which I think is, it's attractive because it, it takes advantage of, of thinking and understanding the proportions of the question, um, but it's a bit kind of like blink and you'll miss it in terms of the working, okay? So here comes method two. Um, what I think is a bit tricky about this question, and um, one of the things that confused people was just it's all algebraic, right? So um, you've got M's and N's and you don't know what any of these numbers are, so you just kind of have to sift out those pronumerals from the vector pronumerals, and then there's like more than one way to say the vectors, like OB versus little b and all that kind of thing, right? So um, one of the things that is always helpful, particularly in proof questions, um, but vector questions it's the same, is if the pronumerals are sort of like weeding you out, flipping you out, right? Then we'll get rid of the pronumerals and see if you can employ some reasoning that will help you understand the situation and then bring that back into the pronumeral world. So let me give you an example of this, right? What we've got here um, is kind of like a version, a simplified numerical version of the situation we've got, okay? So there's this uh, interval A, B, and it's been divided up with this point C, right? And we're told that there's a ratio between them. So what I've done is something very similar here, right? I've got some um, interval and it's been divided up in the middle, and then I've just designated some numbers here rather than M and N, which are just a teeny bit abstract from my um, teeny little brain here. And I've decided, well, okay, can I reason through this and use that logic to help me when I do introduce the pruning rules, right? So the first thing you can all see is that if I've broken this up in the ratio two to five, right? Um, what that tells you is that the whole thing there is going to represent seven units of some kind. Now, the reason why that's helpful is because you can then state, you know, you can see here, AC is from the start sort of to that well, it's not midway, it's not a midpoint, but however far along C is, I can think about from the start, this is equivalent to A, right, over to that sort of, you know, part way along, I can think about PR as a proportion of PQ, right? Um, what proportion is it? Well, in this case, it's pretty clear to see that PR is two-sevenths, two-sevenths of the entire interval, PQ, right? Two over seven P. Q, and that's because um, the direction's the same and just this constant coefficient tells you how far along you go this kind of yardstick, as it were. So how do I bring this into um, our, our pronumeral, our unknown kind of situation here, right? Well, this is the relationship we've been told in this situation. I don't have a PQ and an R, I've got an AB and a C. If you're told that CB on AC is M over N, which one is M? And which one is N? You just have to be a teeny bit careful here, right? Um, you just compare for, across the numerators and you compare across the denominators. This is gonna be M and this is gonna be N, which is slightly dicey because it's like, hey, hold on a second, it's like it's right to left instead of left to right, okay? But that's one of the things that we're looking for here. So if that's the case, you can see likewise down the bottom, I got that seven by adding the two proportions. So it's just gonna be M plus N. Now the reason why this is useful is because now I can say, I can go directly to saying AC is equal to this thing related to the whole AB vector, right? It's going to be, instead of two over seven, it's this length, which was the two before, over this length, which was the seven before the, the entire interval, multiplied by AB. 
Do you agree with that? Like it's that, that proportion of the entire interval. And from here, like I said, just kind of blink and you'll miss it. What is AB? Um, one of the definitions we have for it is it's, the, it's B minus A, right? In, in lowercase notation. Um, if you're a little suspect of that, cause you're like, Mr. Wu, there's two whole marks here, okay? Is this gonna be enough? Um, number one, this diagram here is doing a lot of the reasoning for us. But number two, if you're still a bit paranoid that you're like, Mr. Wu, will I get full marks for this? Then we can just tease out just a teeny little bit just to make it more obvious. And I think it's a lot easier to do. Like you don't need any of the, um, the sophisticated, uh, substitution and rearrangement that we're doing here. It's much simpler if we think about it in this case here. Um, I've got N on M plus N out the front. And AO by definition is minus OA. I'm just going backwards along the vector. And so you can see here is the little b and here's the minus little a, right? So I'm very satisfied to just put it there, not only is this less lines of working, but I would say that each of the lines of working is instrumentally easier to do, right? Like it's pretty straightforward working, okay? All right, so um, that was part one. I, I promised I would show you two ways. Um, part two is quite routine, so I'm gonna do it real quick, and then I'm gonna send you into breakouts to have a go at part three together, okay? So here's this result, it's just the one mark, so it's not meant to be arduous. So here's the proof. I'm thinking about OC, right? How do I get from O to C using the results that I've already gotten so far? Well, um, you can see there's this C component. Well, I just proved that this is AC, right? So clearly the relationship to get OC and use this along the way, um, the most obvious way to do that is go from O to A and then go from A to C, which is, allows me to use the part one result, right? So that's going to be little A, that's gonna be this, which I just got from the result above. And I should say that from part one. And then from here, it's just a matter of like expanding the brackets and slicing and dicing, right? I'll get them on the same M plus N denominator, which is M A plus N A all over. M plus N, I hope you can see that that first fraction is just equivalent to the little a. Um, I'll expand this while I'm at it, so that gives me an NB minus an NA, and that's all divided by the same denominator. And then you just get some nice canceling happening, right? You can see this minus NA and this plus NA, they're gonna go. Um, and that leaves me with, if I separate out um, this, this term here and this term here, it's pretty much exactly what you need, right? There's the M on M plus N out the front, lots of that A vector. And then there's the N on M plus N, uh, lots of the B vector as required. So that's why you can see it's just worth the one mark.